ba 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 da drawing part two. Hey, what's up, guys? Okay, so this is going to be drawing number two. Actually, not drawing. It's going to be inking of my last drawing that I did of Beast from the X-Men. So this was actually done a couple days ago. I live streamed it. Uh, overall, it took about an hour, 20 minutes, I would say. But um, I'm going to be obviously ramping it up here, and I'm going to be commentating over it like I did with my last video. So, um, yeah, I uh, hope you guys enjoy it, and I'll see you later at the end. So this is where we go fast forward. Let's go. All right, so we are here. This is the underdrawing of the beast. <laughs> If it kind of just dawned on me last night. Um, it's really early morning right now and uh, my voice is very monotone so I'm gonna try to sound as upbeat as possible. So if it seems exaggerated, that's because I'm intentionally trying to hype myself up um, over my drawing of the beast. <laughs> I was saying before, like I had this epiphany last night when I was um, kind of just laying in bed that the beast, probably not the best character in the world to kind of re try to reignite my YouTube channel. Um, you know, you don't hear people say, you know what would be awesome to draw is the Beast. Yeah, says nobody. Nobody likes the Beast. But anyway, here we are. It just happened to be the next character up on this giant pinup that I'm trying to do. And unfortunately, it was the Beast. But it is what it is. So here, here what I'm doing now, I'm just looking at what I'm, I'm drawing is uh, I've noticed the, um, I'm noticing the face and I actually quite like it a lot. Um, my thinking behind it was I wanted the beast to kind of look kind of anime or more modern, like um, maybe have a bit of anime influence. Uh, and I'm liking it so far. I do this kind of weird beard mustache thing on him as you can see. But um, yeah, I'm digging it. That's my influence. Like I love Street Fighter and I love like anime. So I try to incorporate that into every single one of my drawings, even when I'm drawing American style comic books, which is what I started with. That's what I started with um, in the 90s was drawing X-Men and Jim Lee was my hero. He still is. I still love Jim Lee. I think he's amazing. Um, but since then I've had other influences, uh, Cowboy Bebop, Ninja Scroll, stuff like that. I just, I just really love anime. It's, it's really dynamic, and um, it's, it's my preferred kind of theme now because it's so ornate and flowing. So it's, I just love it. But anyway, let's talk about inking. I'm talking about everything outside of, um, outside of inking, and not about inking itself. Um, now that I think about it, I'm kind of, I didn't prepare well for this. Um, yeah, I don't have much to say about inking because I've been doing it for all my life pretty much. It just comes natural to me. I remember back in high school, I used to draw simply for the purpose of inking. What I mean by that is I didn't want to draw, I just wanted to cut straight to the inking part. Maybe I should have been an inker or something like that, I don't know. But back back in the day, we didn't have uh, digital art, so we had to use India ink and, and crow quills. And if you don't know what that is, I, I don't blame you. It's, it's ancient. You can look it up on Google. <laughs> It's a very laborious way of, of inking. But a lot of um, comic book art, we still do it that way. Uh, there's certain quality that you can get with that that you can't get with digital inking. We're getting close. I think I shouldn't say that. You can, you can totally get it now because of the, um, all these amazing tablets that we're getting. But um, when I'm inking, I typically use um, three tools. I'll use a solid ink pen. In this case, I'm using Clip Studio, and I'm using the G Pen. And the G Pen is amazing, but it's very unforgiving. It recognizes pen pressure, but it doesn't recognize opacities. What I mean by that is it, you can go from thick to thin, but there are no variances in opacities in between there. For that, you'd probably want to go with the darker pencil, which I've kind of gravitated towards over the G Pen lately because my thing is now going forward, I wanna be able to paint it later on. And painting over the G Pen is very hard. 
um, if you wanted to go for a painterly look. Now the reason why I love the G-Pen now and in the past is because my work is very cell shaded. And when I go to the coloring phase of the Beast, um, I'm going to use the cell shaded look. So it's going to be very clean, like hard, lots of hard cuts. But if you wanted to go for a more painterly look, I would go for a softer brush for sure. But the G-Pen is a solid brush for inking comic book art and um, manga. Um, the only problem is, yeah, it's, it's very unforgiving. Your hands have to be very trained. So you're going to have to work a lot of the muscles in the hands just to kind of get it accustomed to making straight lines. But once you're there, it's a dream. This is the, this is the reason why I switched to Clip Studio over Photoshop. Um, the other tool I use is the masking tool. It's like, like a lasso tool. So what you do is you highlight it and it creates these, um, these dash lines in between, right? And um, yeah, it's just like that. Um, but instead of moving things around, I would use it to fill hard shapes instead of brushing those shadows in. I would paint them in with the lasso tool. And this will save you a lot of time. Uh, not only will it save you a lot of time, but it also gives you hard edges. Edges that you typically wouldn't get if you were to brush them in with a brush. And for me, you'll hear me talk about this a lot in every aspect of my art, is contrast. You're going to need contrast in your drawings. It's what makes it dynamic. Um, contrast in lines, so you're going to want to mix hard lines next to soft lines, round lines next to really jagged, sharp, straight lines, things like that. And um, that's what the lasso tool gives you. It gives you really hard shadows, really hard straight lines. And it gives it, um, it just makes your drawing more interesting to look at when you have contrast. The other tool is the eraser tool, which is my, uh, what I consider my cheat code. <laughs> it's amazing. I don't think I used it here, but um, I'm not doing a great uh, job at explaining inking. I think I'm fighting time. I see my countdown coming down and I have to kind of compress but maybe this will give me an excuse to make a dedicated inking video but um, the eraser tool is so useful. It's the same thing as the lasso tool. It's, it allows me to create lines that I typically wouldn't be able to get if I was brushing it in um, and it's I know I'm just saying it now but it's, it's hard to explain but that's what I'll do. I'll do a dedicated inking video after this to kind of elaborate more on it and it'll be real time. It won't be sped up, so I'm not kind of um, intimidated by the speed. But anyway, I think it's just wrapping up now, so I'm gonna close it up, and uh, yeah, um, that's a small arm. <laughs> but yeah, the beast. So that's it. I hope that was somewhat entertaining, or at least useful. Um, yeah, had a lot of fun inking it. Beast, not one of my favorite characters at all, but I think it turned out pretty good. And um, since then, like off camera, I've worked on it a little bit more, going in there and putting in some more details. Um, when I say that, I don't mean like putting in details just for the sake of putting in details. Um, what I mean is going back in and kind of refining the shapes, making it look more 3D, making it look more sculpted, maybe adding a few hairs, like even taking out some lines, making some of the lines thicker, some of the lines thinner. So this is what I ended up with, as you can see, if I can show you. Hold on a second. Uh, right there. Looks different than what you probably just saw on the, um, on the stream. But this is about another, I would say, half an hour worth of work. Just going in there, adding some shadows in there, underneath there, and just along the muscles to just kind of pop them out and make them look more sculpted. Also went in and adjusted the head position, brought it out more. Adjusted this arm back here to make it a bit bigger. Um, yeah, made the feet look better, I think. Um, so just overall, just cleaning it up, erasing lines, putting in some lines. Uh, just to kind of, it's in, the devil's in the details, as they say, right? So, let me get back here. So, yeah, that's what I did. I had a lot of fun even um, drawing a character I didn't like. It's amazing. But I'm not looking forward to the next character. I'm, I think I'm going to do Archangel next. Or maybe I'll do Storm. Storm will be fun. Um, but yeah, that's it. Um, I'm gonna. That's it for this video. I think I'm gonna call it there. Uh, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Uh, a follow would be amazing. Um, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video where I'm gonna be coloring. 
and it's going to be a cell shaded kind of style and I'm going to try to um, give you tips on how I color so we'll see um, okay bye bye